Joe Biden clearly has no regrets. Afghans are now paying a heavy price for his mistake. And the women of Afghanistan could end up suffering the most. Many of them have now locked themselves up inside their homes. Girls fear they will not be able to go back to school. Women lawmakers are fearing for their lives. Women journalists are afraid as well. They fear they could be targeted by the Taliban. Our next report tells you how the women of Afghanistan are responding to the return of the Taliban. Tuesday, barely 48 hours after the Taliban's takeover, a brave female journalist returned to the anchor's desk in her studio in Kabul. She interviewed a spokesperson from the Taliban. Another female journalist was tracking what's happening on the streets of Kabul. No one could have imagined this back in the 1990s. The fall of the Taliban in 2001 allowed the women of Afghanistan to work. But now, these women could lose their basic freedoms. My name is Gulail Krimi and I'm a journalist. These days, in this government, it's pretty tense because what we have gained in 20 years, we don't want to be deprived because of it. We have to move forward to work as journalists. It's important and I would serve as courage for other women. I request the government that the women who were working, they should be allowed to continue. The women of Afghanistan are afraid. They are not convinced by the Taliban's assurances. Many of them are now staying indoors. They are afraid to step out again after the Taliban's takeover. So as an MP, as a female, as a... Even the lawmakers don't feel safe. Farzana Kochai was a member of the Afghan parliament. She now fears for her life. For me, I'm afraid of these things. First of all, my life, uh, because uh, things can happen here, everything. It's, it's like they are unpredictable at all. And people knows the nature of the Taliban and what is happening in Afghanistan. And after that, my my freedom. If the woman would be allowed to work, if women would be uh, having the right uh, of political participation, social participation, economical participation in these things, and access to education, these are these are all things that I'm afraid of. Some women mustered up the courage to protest in Kabul today. The Taliban say that they will protect women's rights and allow the participation of women in government. But it still wants to impose the Sharia law. The women of Afghanistan know what that means. The last time the Taliban took power, it had imposed a harsh form of the Sharia law. Under this, women were not allowed to work. Girls were banned from attending schools. Women had to cover their faces and they had to be accompanied by a male guardian whenever they stepped out. Those who didn't follow the rules were stoned and lashed in public. It seems like the women can sense a return of those dark days. After the Taliban's takeover, burqa shops are doing brisk business in Afghanistan. Before they entered Kabul, the Taliban were already scouting women between 12 and 45 years to be married off to them. The United Nations has expressed concern about the future of girls and women in Afghanistan. UNHCR remains concerned about the risk of human rights violations against civilians in this evolving context, including for women and girls, those perceived to have a current or past association with the Afghan government, international organizations, or with in international military forces. The atmosphere is already changing in Afghanistan, reports say. Business owners in the country have taken down pictures of women from beauty salons, tailor shops and plastic surgery centres. They are afraid that they will be punished by the Taliban. The Afghan women feared the worst if the Taliban captured power again. Now, it looks like their fears could come true. Bureau Report, We On, World is One. We On, now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.